Let us first have a moment of silence for the victim in this case. Welcome to ADMC Investigations. This is the fourth video in the series. Check the playlist in the future for more. We have a lot of exclusive content coming just like this. We put out multiple videos each week, so if you're a fan of consistent true crime videos, make sure you're subscribed. The absolute best way to support this channel is to subscribe. And if you appreciate what we're doing here, hit that like button. Let us know we're moving in the right direction. Okay, enough rambling. Let's get into it. This is a horrendous story with some absolutely abhorrent people. Vera Jo Regal was a 24-year-old mother of one. She lived in Findlay, Ohio, with a family that some have compared to the Manson family. There is an excellent documentary that I would urge all of you to watch that will give you a very good idea of what these people are. The link is in the description below. Vera was essentially a slave to these people, and at 24 years old, she had the mental capacity of an 8-year-old. She was completely taken advantage of. These interviews and interrogations that we will release over the next few weeks will tell her story like it's never been told before, and we'll make sure that these scumbags have the light shine on them and Vera Jo Regal will not be forgotten. This fourth interview in the series is of Shannon Brooks, again. This one took place on July 7, 2011, over three months after Vera was killed. Apparently she had more she wanted to say to detectives after she had moved out of the Brooks' home to try and clear her name. Let us know how you think she did in the comments below. I think she's still a piece of... yeah. Moving along. She married into the Brooks family by way of Michael Brooks, she lived with the Brooks and was witness to the vile way that the whole family treated Vera. She is here in this interview with her lawyer, and here's how her second interview went. Alright. So, what is it that you would like to talk about, Shannon? Um, well, when I came in here the uh, first two times, I was obviously living with the Brooks family, mm -hmm. and I was feeling very threatened by them, and I was feeling very unsafe, and what I was, I wasn't able to say what everything I wanted to say, because they threatened me every time I would leave. You know, if I talk to you guys, then I would end up next, mm -hmm. or they would hurt me or something, and that, that scared me, you know, so I kind of didn't say everything, so I just kind of wanted to, you know, I wanted to say everything now that I knew, and I actually want to go back to when I actually first moved in. Okay. So from what i seen and what I heard, and, you know, I just... It's just, it's been haunting me since I moved out, and when they told me that I would be able to talk to you guys again, mm -hmm. I took the chance at it because I knew I wasn't with them and I was safe now and they couldn't hurt me, so okay. I just kind of wanted to, you know, tell everything now that I knew and, um, you know, what Sherry had said and everything that she did and everything. and. Okay. So. Okay. Anything that'll help. <laughs> okay. Do so you want to start when you moved in? Yeah, I mean, I can't remember, you know, specific dates or times, okay. but I can try. We'll do our best yeah. so we can figure it out. Because it's okay. been a while. <laughs> okay. So. So, when, when did you move in? I moved in the end of August of 2010. Okay. And that was at what address? Um, 300 Center Street because okay. they had just moved into the house. So. Okay. We moved into there. Um, it, it actually starts like when I first started going to their house, when I first started dating Michael, mm -hmm. um, when they lived on um, County Road 220. That's when I first started seeing stuff. And it kind of it shocked me in the beginning because I didn't think anyone, you know, would be that mean mm -hmm. or anything, but I had, this was back in the end of July, um, I started going over to their house and in the beginning Vera seemed, you know, happy, 
but not, you know, the happy-go-lucky type person. She was sad in a way, and, you know, I would always talk to her and ask her, you know, things about her life and stuff and everything, and then one day I went over there, and she was holding her hand like this, and I kept, I asked her what was wrong, and she moved her hand, and she had a big black spot right there. Mm -hmm. And she had told me that Zachary had shot her in the hand with a BB gun. Okay. And I confronted Zachary about it, and I asked him, and he said, well, it's none of your business what goes on here. Mm -hmm. I backed out of it. I said, okay, mm -hmm. you know. So It was on Center Street or at the other place, yeah? Out on 220. Okay. That was out there. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I kind of talked to her, you know, trying to, you know, see if she was okay, if she needed help or anything. And she told me, no, I'm fine, you know. She said, I'll be okay. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, I'm used to it. And I said, well, you shouldn't have to live like that. And she said, well, if I leave, they'll take my daughter. Mm -hmm. and that was really her main concern, was mm -hmm. her daughter. So, you know, the next couple of days that I went over there, everything seemed fine. And then August 5th is when their brother... Punky had passed away. I had seen Zachary snap. He went ballistic and he started throwing stuff and he actually threw, I think it was a, a bottle, like a baby bottle. Mm -hmm. He threw it at Vera and it hit her in the eye and it had given her a black eye. And I told Zachary to calm down, and when I did, you know, Sherry stepped in and said he doesn't have to calm down, his brother just died. Mm -hmm. And I looked at her and I said, well, he just hit Vera, and she's like, oh, well, she'll get over it. And I just, I didn't say anything because, you know, Sherry scares me. And so I just, I stayed out of it then. And then um, when I moved in, on, or no, actually it was Punky's funeral on the 13th of August. Mm -hmm. I had showed up to their house that morning and I seen Vera and her face was all bruised up and she, her face was all puffed up and everything and I asked her what happened and all she said was, I can't talk about it. And right then and there, I knew it had to have been Zachary mm -hmm. because he was the one that always, you know, when I was around, that was the only one that was hitting her. And so I assumed it was Zachary. And then Zachary was laughing about it because he was sitting in the living room and he was talking about it and laughing like it was funny what happened, you know, that he had hit her and you know, he like he was proud of it. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you know, Sherry was a little edgy about it because, you know, she tried to put makeup on her so it would cover the bruises and everything. But when they got to the funeral home, people actually seen it. And mm -hmm. I know they did because they were all talking to her. And I just... I kind of went in my own little corner, I guess, because I just, I felt bad for her. And I told three people at the funeral home about it, and I'm not sure, you know, maybe they called the cops, or <laughs> I know mm -hmm. someone showed up later on for it, but I told a girl named Christy Restmeyer. I told a guy, Drew um, Nelson, and I can't remember the other person I told. I know it was those two that I told. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you know, things seemed okay, and I 
didn't go over there for a while because I was getting sick from their house. <laughs> and so I stayed home for a while. And then Michael had asked me to move in with them, so I ended up moving in the end of August. Okay. And it was... I'm going to say a week maybe after we moved in, Zachary had gotten mad at Vera. can't remember what it was for, but he had gotten mad at her and he had thrown a hairbrush at her, Sherry's hairbrush, and it had hit her right here and it had broke her nose. Mm -hmm. And I grabbed Vera and I took her in the bathroom and I texted my friend, Crystal, and I told her, you know, you need to call the cops. I couldn't do it because if they found out that it was me, then I didn't know what would happen. Mm -hmm. So I told Crystal, you need to call the cops, you know, Zachary just threw a hairbrush and broke her nose. So yeah, she, she saw that happen? Yes. Okay. I seen it happen. Um, I was in the living room, um, Zachary was in the doorway of the, this was on Center Street, mm -hmm. Zachary was in the doorway of the kitchen in the living room, mm -hmm. and Vera was sitting on the floor in front of Sherry, wrapping her feet, and she had turned around because Zachary had said Vera really loud. She turned around, and the next thing you know, he's got a hairbrush and he just throws it at her. And it hits her right here, dead in the middle. And I mean, her nose started swelling up real big and she just blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I got up and I went and I took her in the bathroom and I cleaned her nose up and her face and stuff. And she always thanked me. So she said, thank you. And I took her back in there. And as we were in the bathroom, I texted my friend. And I told her, you know, you need to call the cops. Um, Zachary just hit her in the face. And I'm not sure if she did or not. I can't remember if it was in August that they showed up or if it was later. Um, but, so I'm not sure if she did. But then a couple months went by. Um, and then in November, um, her daughter was walking because she just learned how to walk. And she was walking around the, this coffee table they had in the living room. Mm -hmm. And she, Vera was sitting on the, the love seat that was right by the table. Well, she, she had walked past Vera and she had fell. And she, Willardine. yeah, Willardine, right. sorry. Okay. And she fell and she had hit her head really bad on the corner of the table. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting in the living room. I seen it happen. Vera did not touch her. Mm -hmm. And Zachary had gotten upset and he said that Vera pushed her. Mm -hmm. And that's all it took. I Zachary went crazy and he grabbed her by her throat and he told her that he is not allowed to touch or that she was not allowed to touch his daughter ever again and he threw her on the ground and he picked up Willardine and she was she was, couldn't breathe you know with the baby she couldn't breathe so he was patting her back and stuff trying to get her to breathe and then finally she could well Vera had went into Sherry's room Sherry had gotten mad like Zachary, she stood up off of her bed and she had grabbed Vera and she, she's got long fingernails, Sherry does. Mm -hmm. And she had started clawing at Vera's back and Vera was just crying. And I just, I wanted to do something, but you know, I had a cup thrown at my face because I tried to get in it before. Mm -hmm. And I actually had fractured my nose right here from it. So who did who threw that at you? Uh, Scotty, okay. the oldest one. Mm -hmm. He had threw it at me, 
And so I guess that was maybe my warning to stay out of it from now on. I don't know. But I wanted to get up and I, I just, I wanted to do something so bad. And I just, I seen Sherry do that and I stood up and I told Sherry, you know, you need to stop. And then that's when Zachary came up to me and said, you need to stay out of it. So I said, okay. And I did. And then they left her alone for a while and then Zachary went down the street to his Aunt Sam. They called her Samantha Schwab or something like that. Mm -hmm. And she had come down and next thing you know, she's telling Vera to go in her room. And Samantha? Samantha is telling Vera to go into Vera's room. And she does. She's laying on the bed, you know. And I was sitting on the couch and I could, you know, just see slightly around the corner and on her bed. And I, I couldn't see the whole thing, but Zachary, Chucky, Garth, and Sherry were all telling Samantha to punch her. Just punch her, you know, that's all they kept saying. Just hit her, hit her, get her now. You know, so Samantha punched her in the face, broke her nose again uh, for the second time that I seen. So the first time was Zachary and then Samantha did it. So naturally, you know, her nose was big and Samantha afterwards was being all nice to her and told her to go clean up, you know, wash her face and then, you know, go in and watch TV like it never happened. And then, you know, the next day, Sherry had called or texted, I'm not sure. She called, I think called, Crystal to come over because she wanted to tell her something. So Crystal came over and Sherry had told her what Vera supposedly had done. And Crystal started hitting her. And that just, that took me away because that's not Crystal. She, as far as I've known her, you know, she's kind of done that, but she started hitting her. And so, you know, that one I stepped into because Crystal, she used to be my friend. So, you know, at that time I stepped in and I told her to knock it off. Mm -hmm. She ended up hitting me. <laughs> so I backed away. And Zachary and Garth and Chucky and Sherry were just sitting there laughing. And I was just in amazement. I couldn't believe what I was saying. I've never seen anybody, you know, be beaten in my life. Yeah. And so I just, I sat there and I watched it. And I just, I couldn't get to the phone because Sherry always had that phone in her hand. Always. Can never get to the phone. And my cell phone was out of minutes. I didn't have any minutes and I didn't know if you could still use it if you had no minutes to call the cops or not. So I didn't know what to do. So she stopped finally and she had left. And Vera was, you know, sitting on the floor all curled up in a bowl with her head hands like this and her knees up to her chest, you know, like she always did. And things cooled down during, you know, Christmas and stuff. And then January, I think it was. I think that's when Children's Services was out there. Um, somebody had seen her or something and children's services had came out to the house to check on Melody and then the cops had showed up and of course you know Sherry was talking for Vera telling the cops that it was some guy named Desmond something in Lima 
her ex-boyfriend who had beat her up and stuff because she had all the bruises on her face mm -hmm. and everything. And I just, I kept shaking my head no, hoping that the cop would see me shaking my head no, and they never looked at me. So it kind of went on, you know, that it was someone else, but I think everybody knew better that it wasn't some other guy. And then, in February, Vera had picked up Willardine because she was getting into something. And she, um, she picked her up to move her while Zachary had caught her. And once again, he had gone off. <clears throat> and he had... What do you mean he caught her? He was in the living room, and she was in Sherry's room like she always was. Uh -huh. And Willardine was getting into the... They had a box of clothes sitting by the TV in Sherry's room. Mm -hmm. And Willardine was getting into the clothes and stuff, and... Sherry had asked her to get Willardine. I don't know if it was maybe to set her up or what. Okay. But she had asked her to get Willardine to move her. So, Vera, you know, she usually does what she's told. So, she grabbed her and she moved her and she gave her a kiss on the cheek, you know. And Zachary had seen her oh. picking her up and he didn't like it because he told her she was not allowed to pick up his daughter. Mm -hmm. And Vera said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you know. And Zachary had, Vera was sitting on the floor in front of Sherry again. And he had kicked her in the back of her head. And her head went forward like this and she hit the front of her head on Sherry. So Sherry got mad at her. And she grabs her, and Vera tries to, you know, move. She moved over by the TV, which was, like, across from the bed at the end of the bed. And Vera had moved over there, and Sherry had gotten up, and she grabs Vera by her hair, pulled her shirt over her head, like she was maybe trying to choke her or something. I wasn't really sure. And... Then once again, she takes her nails and she starts clawing at her back again and she starts punching her in her back. And it took Zachary, Garth, and Kevin Sr. to get Sherry off of her. And I told Sherry, I was like, you know, you guys really need to stop doing this. It's going to kill her, you know. I thought, you know, you guys are going to do something horrible. And... I started crying. I just, I was so scared, not only, you know, for my life, but for Vera and for the baby. And I just, after that, things started to slow down, but then towards the end of February, early March, like the beginning of March, that's when Chucky started getting involved in it. He would kick her in the back of her head. He would punch her, smack her, pull her hair. He cut her hair off once. Um, he spray painted her hair. I was just, I couldn't stand it. And Chucky's small, so you know, I thought, okay, I'll, just, I'll try and get in this one. But I was wrong. He's very mean. He punched me and he told me, he started calling me names and he pushed me away and told me if I got in the middle of it then I'd be next. Whatever that meant. So, after that, it came to, I had went to my aunt's house for three days, I think, for St. Patrick's Day. So I had left and then I came home and then on the 22nd, I believe it was the 22nd or 23rd, that's when Danny and Nicole had showed up. Okay. <clears throat> and the first, I'd say day and a half, 
things were fine. You know, they paid no attention to her. Everyone left her alone. And then, Farrah had looked at Danny. Just one look is all it took, and all she did was just glancing back. Nicole got mad, and she had went in and asked Sherry if she could hit her. I said, come on, you guys. Don't, you know, just leave her alone. And so Nicole had went in. She grabbed her by her hair, and she punched her pretty hard. And Vera, at that point, you know, she knew not to cry. She knew not to stay sad. So she just kept quiet, and she just sat on the couch and let her do it. And Nicole had hit her maybe five, six times, and then... Where was she hitting her? What part of the body? Everywhere, pretty much. She was just, you know, just taking swings at her, and she was just hitting her a couple times in the face, and then she'd go towards, you know, her chest and her abdomen, and then her legs, and so... Then she finally stopped because Danny had told her to stop. And then, <clears throat> sorry, um, then they left her alone for the rest of the day. And then the 20, I'm going to say the 24th, I think it was, or 25th, I can't really remember. Um, Danny and Nicole, and I think it was Zachary, Chucky, and Garth, and Scotty, they had all left, so it was just me, Vera, Sherry, Michael, and Kevin home, and Michael and Kevin were outside, they were fixing a bike, I think, and I was inside, and I had told Vera, well, I didn't really tell her. I just, I kind of, I started talking to her and I asked her if she was okay, you know, she needed anything and she said she was thirsty. So I got her some water and she drank that and Sherry looks at me and she's like, why are you being so nice to her? She ain't worth it. And I said, you're wrong, she is, you know, she's a good person. And Sherry said, no, she's not. She's only here because of that baby. And I said, I just shook my head. I just, I didn't want to believe what I was hearing. You know, that, that, that was her cousin, that was her family. And she said, the only reason that Vera was there was because of the baby. If that baby wasn't there, Vera wouldn't have been there. And. I told her, well, that was a poor excuse, you know. And she started, Sherry started yelling at me, calling me, you know, all these names and telling me that maybe she should have Zachary start hitting me every once in a while, that maybe I'd be better. And then, you know, Michael had overheard her say that because he was walking up the, up on the porch when she had said that. Michael had come in and said, you know, you don't need to talk to her like that. She's not, you know, a bad person. She's just doing what's right, you know, and everything. And so Sherry had left me alone for a little bit. And then the next day, I was upstairs, I think. Yeah, I was upstairs. And all I heard was a big, loud scream. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> and I've heard it easy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I walked downstairs and it was Vera. She was screaming. And I'm like, what is going on? She's holding her leg on her left side. And she's just sitting there holding it. And all I see is blood. And I'm just like, oh my God. And she moves her hand, and Zachary had stabbed her in her in her leg. And that's when Zachary came up to me, and he had the knife. You know, he's like this in front of my face, and he's like, "You tell anybody, and I'll do it to you." 
so I didn't say anything and I just I went over to Vera and I grabbed the uh, peroxide and the gauze and stuff and I cleaned it up and everything and Sherry tried to help us you know best she could and she actually took her finger Sherry took her finger and she stuck it inside the wound right there and Vera was crying because it hurt and I said you need to stop doing that it's hurting her and she's like she'll live and I'm just like oh my god so you know I finished helping her clean up and stuff and putting the gauze and tape and stuff on and <clears throat> They, um, Sherry had told her to go sit in the living room while she went to bed. She lay, it was middle of the afternoon. Sherry lays down, you know, she's sleeping like she always does. And, you know, so it's just me and Vera. And then Dean and Nicole and Chucky and Garth walk in. I don't know where they were or where they were coming from. They walk in and Danny's yelling, he got stabbed, you know, and he's got, I think it was two or three stab wounds on his leg. And he's all, you know, yelling and hollering and stuff. So Sherry wakes up and they clean his leg up and everything and then things are back to normal, you know. No one's hitting anyone or anything and then, and then out of nowhere, Chucky goes in the kitchen and he grabs the dish soap and he puts it in a cup with water and he brings it in and at first he wanted me to drink it and I said no I know what that is and he goes over to Vera and he forced her to drink it he put it up to her mouth and she kept saying no she kept shaking her head like this and he just he opened like he <laughs> went like this to her and you know he pulled her face and made her drink it and she runs in the bathroom and she gets sick and then um he goes back into the kitchen and he dumps the rest out I guess and everything um Vera comes back in and she's holding her stomach because she says I don't feel good and, you know she starts crying a little bit so I told her you know just sit on the couch just sit there and I didn't know, you know, what to do, and because everyone was telling me, oh, you don't need to call poison control. I, I don't know what to do when you drink soap, you know? So I was just, I was kind of scared, so, you know, I, I did. I called poison control, and I got, like, this help machine thingy. <laughs> And they they told you what to do, like if you drink soap or something. And all they say is drink a lot of water. So I went in and I got her a big glass of water and I told her to drink it. It just made her more sick. I didn't know what to do. So I went to Sherry. And Sherry said, well, she'll be fine. Just let her sit there. I'm just like, oh my God. I did not know this family. And I really... I regret it sometimes, but you know, after Chucky had done that, he had went down to Samantha's house or something, and then they finally left our home, and then the day of the 26th shows up, and I got up, you know, like every Saturday, went to the food giveaway with Kevin, Scotty, and Michael. And we had come home at 10, 10, 30, something like that. And <clears throat> the, the Friday and Saturday, Sherry had had um, Punky's son, which is little K. She had had him. And so I had put both of them in the high chairs okay and Melody and I gave him a cupcake and something else I forget cereal or pop tarts or something and then um then Zachary was asleep on the couch Danny and Nicole were upstairs Chucky was upstairs Garth was upstairs so as soon as, you know, we 
had the babies in the high chair and stuff. Zachary wakes up and everything, and Vera's in Sherry's room, wrapping her feet, like always. And for no reason, Zachary just gets up, goes in there, and kicked her in her side, where her kidney is, or mm -hmm. something. And <clears throat> then Danny and Nicole come downstairs, and by that time, I had the two kids out of the high chair, and I was giving, I think it was, well, and I gave a bath to first. I took her in the bathroom to give her a bath, brought her out, got her dressed, and then I gave the other one a bath and got him dressed. And, you know, everyone's awake at that time, you know. They're all awake and yelling and everything else just for no reason, I guess. And so I had the two kids in the living room, and then Danny and Nicole are in Sherry's room talking about something I couldn't really hear what they were saying. And Kevin and Michael had left to go to Dollar General, I think. They went somewhere, I know that. And I was sitting on the couch, you know, just watching the two kids run back and forth. And Vera was in Sherry's room, sitting by the TV where the dresser was. She was sitting there. And the next thing I know, Vera kept saying no. So I got up, sorry. I got up and I walked over and all I seen was Nicole punching her. She just kept punching her. She wouldn't stop. And I found out why she was doing it is because Sherry had told Nicole that Vera supposedly had pushed Willard and, and tried to kill her. And Nicole had just, she went off. And she had her on the floor and she was just, she one punch after another, she just kept punching her in her side, her back, her head, her face. I just, it was so, I was just so, huh, I can't find a word for it. And then Danny, steps in and he starts kicking her in her side and I had grabbed Danny by his arm and I said stop and he pushed me away and he just kept kicking her and then finally Garth and Zachary had said stop and then they finally stopped and they had to pull Nicole off of her and the bear just barely moved you know I imagine maybe she had broken her inside I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but I, at that time, I was so shaken up and I was so scared. I was sitting on Sherry's bed and I was, I was just shaking really bad and I was, I was kind of out of it. I couldn't really understand what was going on around me and my head was spinning. I don't know if maybe it was from seeing what they did or from what was going on or what. But I was just sitting there, and Sherry had given me a Xanax, I think it was. I took them before I had a prescription for him, but I just, I needed something to calm me down, and she told me to take that, and I said, it's not going to kill me, is it? <laughs> Being smart, you know? And she's like, no, it's not going to hurt you, and everything, and... So I took it and I sat there and I had a glass of water in my hand and Danny just starts kicking her again. And I'm just like, you guys really need to stop doing this. You really need to stop. And at that point, I just, I started crying, like really bad. I just eat, I, oh. And so, you know, then that's when Danny had grabbed the belt I'm not sure if it was his belt or someone else's belt, but he had grabbed a belt. And the first time they started hitting her, it was just the belt. They had started hitting her with it on her back, on her head and everything. And it was 
Nicole who started hitting her first, and then Danny did it. And then that's when he pulled the knife out and came at me with it and held it right here. And I kept, and he kept telling me, do it now. Defend your man, whatever that meant, I didn't know. And so he kept, he pushed it closer to my neck and I could feel the blade on my neck at that point. And I kept telling him, no, I can't do it. I can't, I've never hit anybody and I can't do it. At that point, Zachary had grabbed a lock. It was like a gold lock, I think off of the top of Sherry's, or no, it was the bike lock. Okay, it wasn't a lock, it was a, it's the piece that goes around the handlebars or something. And he had grabbed that and they put it on it. And they, Nicole had started hitting her with it first. And Danny kept pushing me towards her. And he kept pushing it further into my neck. So, I grabbed it and I had, I, I just tapped her at first and they didn't like it. So Danny grabbed my arm and he had swung my arm back and he made me throw my arm down. And after two times, I was like, no, I can't do this. So I just, I dropped the belt and I, I moved back. And at that point, Vera was just laying there. and. She, I, I didn't know what was going on. My, I had blacked out there for a second or two, I think. And she was just, at that point, she was just holding her head like this. And she was just curled up in a ball again. And at that point, I just, I went in the living room and I sat on the couch on the love seat. And I just, I cried. I just, I started crying because I've never hit anybody, and I didn't like it at all. And I just, I wanted to turn around and just, I wanted to hit Danny, I really did. And I don't know why I didn't. And so I was sitting on the pillow seat, and then they tell Vera to go upstairs because <clears throat> there were cops outside for some reason, a fight down the street or something. And I guess they didn't want them to see her if they came to the house or something. So Danny took, uh, took Vera upstairs and he said that he made her lay on the floor, just lay straight on the floor, did not touch anything. And that's, they had the mace and Danny had sprayed the mace on her. Who, I'll say, who had the mace? You said they. Oh, Danny and Nicole. They both had it, and mm -hmm. then Danny had taken it from Nicole, and he had sprayed Vera all over her eyes, everything. And it, that smell is just like, when you have asthma, it makes you really hard to breathe. So I was like panting, trying to breathe and stuff, and Danny had run downstairs and said that Vera had sprayed it when I actually found out that it was Danny who sprayed it. And he was blaming everything on Vera that she was the one that sprayed it. Well, I was having a hard time breathing. I couldn't breathe. My stomach was hurting really bad and everything. And I had went out to the hospital. Zachary and Garth had rode with me and Michael. And I had been out there for stomach pains and breathing problems. And then I had been feeling, you know, nauseous and stuff that day. And I was feeling, this was early in the morning, I was feeling nauseous and hungry and everything. And, you know, of course, if you tell Sherry that she automatically assumes that you're pregnant. She don't care if you're a girl or a guy. She assumes you're pregnant. So, you know, they assumed. I never said anything about being pregnant to them. And all I said was, you know, I feel like it. That's all I said to them. And then I went to the hospital that night, and, you know, they did an ultrasound. There was nothing there. So, okay, I knew I wasn't. And 
my the reason I was having stomach pains is because my chest was tightening up from the spray they had sprayed and everything. Well, after the hospital, I had went home and we had went upstairs and I walked in my room and I was talking to Michael and our door was shut and I had mentioned something about, you know, there wasn't nothing there, that I wasn't pregnant. And Nicole lost it. She came in our room and she's like, you lost the baby. I was like, whoa, I never said I was pregnant, you know. I said, I'm not. <laughs> there was nothing there. And she's like, well, I don't care. She's going to pay for what she did to you. And I'm like, she didn't do nothing to me. You know, and at that point, I wasn't thinking. I was I was on medicine from the hospital and everything. And then that's when Danny walks in and she's and he's like, She's gone. She's dead. I'm gonna kill her. And I was just like, whatever, you know, I thought he was just kidding. I didn't think anything of it at the time. And with the medicine the doc the doctor had put me on at the hospital, I was really woozy and I was just like really dizzy and tired. And so, you know, I thought, okay, it's just a joke. Nothing's gonna happen. So, you know, I went downstairs and I told Sherry what the hospital had to say and everything. And I went in and I told her, you know, just to make sure so she knew that I wasn't pregnant and everything. And I told her and then out of a glance of my eye, I turn around and Vera's in her room, she's getting her shoes on. And I was like, where are you going? And Chucky was like, well, she has to go with Danny and Nicole. I said, well, where are they going? You know, and he's like, they're just taking a walk. I, I was like, I was like, I'm really tired, you know. I, I was half asleep through everything. And so Nicole goes in Vera's room and she grabs her by her arm. And she takes her out on the porch. And I knew I should have gotten up, and I should have called. And I did. And now she's not here. And they um, <clears throat> they had left, and when they had came back, they had blurted it out to everybody in that house what they had done to her. And all Nicole kept saying, <clears throat> well, she's gone. She's gone. You don't have to worry about it no more. Sherry was on her computer typing, doing something. And she had walked up to Sherry and she said, I got my first teardrop. And Sherry just looked at her and she started laughing. She just laughed at her. And then Sherry looked at me and she just smiled and I looked away and I ran upstairs. And when me and Michael had went upstairs, I just I started crying. I said, this can't be real, this can't be real. And I had went back downstairs to try and get the phone. Sherry was on the phone talking to somebody. I don't know who she was talking to. And I just went back upstairs and I laid down and I woke up and that's when we came here the first time. And I was just, I should have said everything when I first came in here and talked and I didn't. And now, well, you're here now, you know, and that's what's important. So, um, you just want to go back a little over some of the stuff. Um, on that day when it was happening, and when they were getting ready to leave, it, who all left with Vera? Danny and Nicole had left with her. Just three of them. Just the three of them. Chucky 
as far as I know, was on the front porch. Mm -hmm. I mean, and he came right back in, and that's when he told us that they had, you know, they went for the walk. Okay. And Chucky told you that, mm -hmm. that they went for a walk. Mm -hmm. Did Vera say anything to you? You know, all, all she said was, you know, she kept saying, well, I don't want to go, it's too cold. Mm -hmm. You know, and I told Vera when she was standing by the wall before they had taken her out of the house, I told her, you know, just stay here, don't go, you know, mm -hmm. just stay here, do not leave with them. She's like, if I don't, they're going to hurt me again. And they're, I feel horrible because I didn't do anything. And Sherry was awake. Why didn't she say something? Why didn't she do anything? You know, I mean, I just, it, it's always on my mind. I just can't get it out of my head. What about um, Danny or Nicole? Did they say anything to you before they left? No, all they said was, we'll be back. That's all they said. And I just... You know, well, they... They had said that they want to meet up with Vera's boyfriend, which was Larry. Who said that? Danny and Nicole had said that. They that, both said it, or one of them said that? You know, you see what I'm getting at? Yeah. <laughs> it, it was Danny who said it, okay. and Nicole had repeated it, I guess, after he had said it. Because okay. she was like, yeah, Larry called, or okay. something like that. Okay. And then Vera said, oh, you know, she was like, well, I don't want to go, it's too cold. You know? And then I just assumed that's where they were going, I guess. I just, I wasn't thinking. So when, when Danny and Nicole came back, um, you said that they came in and just blurted out what they had done. Okay. This is where I want you to be specific of what was said and who said it specifically. Okay. Um, I was in the kitchen getting a bottle for loading and... Nicole had come up behind me and she had put her arms around me and she kept saying, it's done, it's done, it's over, no more. And I said, what are you talking about? You know, like really shocked. I didn't know what she was talking about. And then she turns around and she says, it's done. I was like, what's done? And then she started explaining what they'd done, and she told me that they had taken a knife and they had stabbed her in the chest and her hurt, I think they said. They had shoved it up her you can say it. vagina and that they had stabbed her repeatedly. They took her clothes off of her. And then Danny, then that's when Danny stepped in and said that she's laying on the railroad tracks and she's naked. And I was just like, my mouth fell open. And I'm just like, oh my God. And then they had went, into Sherry's room, Danny and Nicole. And that's when Nicole had walked up to Sherry and said it was done, it was over. And then she had gotten her first real teardrop. And Danny started laughing. And then they had told Sherry the same thing. They had told me all the details. You heard them? Yes. Telling you? I had heard them. And Sherry had turned around and faced Nicole and she just shook her head like this. She just shook it up and down. And then she started laughing. Sherry did. And then she just turned around back to the computer and just started typing again. Didn't say nothing, didn't do nothing. Then she looked at me, smiled, turned around, back to her computer. And that was that. 
So who who all was there when they came back? Me, Michael, Gar I think Garth, Chucky, Garth's friend Alan, Cap, um, Scotty, Kevin, Sherry, and Zachary. Mm, the baby. Yeah, it's pretty much everyone that was living. Pretty much everyone, yeah. Okay. And they were all awake yet? Yeah, they were yeah. all in different rooms of the house. And... Okay. Did, um. Uh, sorry, I'm so ashamed. Did, uh, Nicole or Danny, you know, make any statements as, you know, when you. You said we, we, they were saying we did this. Mm -hmm. Did either of them make a statement of who did what? They just said that we. They didn't say I or anything. They didn't tell us, you know, who done it first, who ended it, who, you know, who did what. I just, all they said was we. I do know that Zachary was going to go with them that night. Mm -hmm. He was going to go with them until Sherry told him not to. Um, so he stayed home. How, how do you know he was going to go? Mm -hmm. Because they didn't think I could hear him. But I was sitting on the couch when I heard Zachary say that I want to go. Mm -hmm. That's what Zachary said. And he's like, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with them. And then Sherry said, no, you need to stay here. You have your daughter to think about. And so then it just ended up being Danny and Nicole who took her. Okay. Did, what, was there more to that conversation that you heard? That's all I heard. I mean, I didn't exactly hear everything that they had said. All I heard was... Zachary saying, I want to go, or I want to go, you know. He just kept saying it over and over, and he was, like, kind of not fighting but arguing with Sherry about it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's when Sherry said, now you have your daughter to think about. Mm -hmm. okay. So I, after they came back and all this stuff was said, what, what happened from that point? After everything was said, I just, the boys kind of, they went off and done their own thing, I guess. They went upstairs or something. And I, me and Michael had went upstairs in our room. We were watching TV, I think. And then we had fallen asleep. And then at like one o'clock in the morning, Danny, Nicole, Zachary, and Gar come barging in our room, and they're drunk. And I'm like, what is going on? And Danny had said that they went to his sister Desta's house and had gotten drunk. And all I was thinking was, okay, Garth and Zachary and Nicole are all underage, and they're drinking. And then, you know, I was just like, I went downstairs for like five minutes and all I heard was yelling and screaming because Danny's sister was outside yelling, telling him to come on and stuff. And Nicole had went into their room, which was actually Zachary's room, and passed out on the bed. Danny had grabbed her phone and a shirt, I think. And he had ran downstairs and had went with his, with his sister. Sherry was still up on the computer. And I had went back upstairs and went back to bed. Michael had went downstairs to help get the boys, Zachary and Garth, to their rooms because they were puking everywhere. Mm -hmm. So he had to help Sherry get him to bed. So, and then he finally went back to bed around five o'clock that morning. 
police only showed up. You remember that? Meaning the, the police officers initially that showed up? Did you talk to them at all? Did you, did you, were you awake when they were there? Mm -hmm. I don't remember. All I remember is you guys, the detectives, showing up. That's all. Okay. I don't really remember the cops showing up there. Okay. Um. One other thing mm -hmm. that just kind of, when you said it today, it kind of surprised me because when I talked with you initially, um, and, and I don't think it's a huge deal, so don't freak out that I'm bringing it up, but um, as far as the pregnancy, mm -hmm. what you told me today is quite a bit different from what you told me the first time around, mm -hmm. okay? First time around, you told me that, you know, you had done several self-pregnancy tests that showed you were pregnant and everything, and had been telling them you were pregnant, and told the ER and everything that you were pregnant. The way you described it today is a little bit different. So, um, you know, and the only, I guess, the only reason I'm bringing that up, my concern about that is, okay, when you're coming and telling me this stuff, you know, what, what, what do I believe? You know, do you see what I'm saying? If you're sitting in my shoes, yeah. you're in my place, you know, that that's that's the only concern I have over right, that. Okay. Right, right. Um, so I don't know if you want to expand on that, which, which, which way we're going. I mean, we obviously know you weren't pregnant. I mean, the, yeah. the medical records showed that and everything, mm -hmm. so... Um, and again, it's it's not. I'm not trying to bind you up or anything like that. I just, as far as to know where we're at mm -hmm. on this honesty level, you know, well, I don't know where 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 I'm at with what with the rest of what you're telling me today. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Well, I I had taken like I think it was two or three home pregnancy tests. And I did tell the ER that, but they had done one at the hospital, and it did come back negative. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, I knew I wasn't. Okay. But the home, I, it's the problem with my system thingy. <laughs> it, I get false negatives. I get false positives. It's just, there's a lot of, you know, Issues that I had, and I'm on a lot of medicine for it and everything. But okay. that's I did forget to mention that today. But yes, I did do them at home, and they were positive. But then when I went to the ER and told them what they had said, and they had done um, a blood test that had come back negative, mm -hmm. so I in fact was not pregnant. So. <coughs> Mm -hmm. It's been like that for a very long time. Excuse me. Uh, so. Anything else that you can think of that you want to say? Nothing I can think of. I think I've pretty much said everything that I've been wanting to. So Alan Cap was there. Mm -hmm. And when did he get there? Do you remember? Uh, and, and roughly, I mean, I know, I don't expect you to remember. I'm thinking it was. Thinking it was that night, or maybe. It was either that day or the yeah. day before. But when they came home, when Dan and Nicole came back to the house, mm -hmm. you said Alan was there, correct? Yes, he was there. Okay. Would he have heard any of this stuff? I don't know if he would have. I'm not sure where he was in the house. I was in the kitchen. So. What, about, what about Zach? Zachary was... 
I believe he was in his mom's room. He might have heard it. I'm not sure. But it's kind of, you know. I I think Zachary was in his mom's room because he's usually always on the bed watching TV when she's on the computer. So, and Michael was in the kitchen with me. Kevin was rolling cigarettes. Chucky was watching TV in the living room. And Scotty was upstairs. And I believe Alan was with Garth upstairs. Maybe I'm not completely sure though. Okay. All right. Um, I can't think of anything else right now. Uh, I appreciate you coming down and talking and being honest with us. Anything? I can't think of anything. Okay. Um, you know, I don't know if there's something later. If I would have any questions, if you still be willing to talk, you know, I would obviously go through Cindy and make okay. sure that that's okay and everything. But um, you know, you've got my number. Mm-hmm. If you call me, I'm gonna go through Cindy probably <laughs> yeah. just you know um, to make sure everything's okay. But um, you know where I'm at. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, because we're to that point, there was a couple times there where you tried contacting me and everything else, and then didn't come back up. Yeah. But I can't, I cannot seek you out at that point when she, when she's asked for an attorney and everything. Okay, so mm-hmm. uh, I just want to make sure you understand that yeah. that it's got to be if you want to do it, you're the one that's going to have to make those, you know, set those gears in motion. So. Mm-hmm. With your attorney, so okay. Okay. All right. Thanks for me. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. I just noticed that cast is up. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. just a new wave of things now. Mm-hmm. Kind of bad.